This is the Wrestling Replay. I am Kato. Welcome to episode number 41, Friday Night Delight. A little bit of AEW Dynamite. A little, oh, AEW Rampage, sorry. And a little bit of Friday Night Smackdown. We're going to go ahead and get things started off with AEW before we jump into the new front side of pro wrestling, being WWE Smackdown. I like what's going on over there, but we'll talk about that in a second. Now, for Rampage, uh, show kicks off Matt Hardy versus Darby Allin hate the reasoning that it even happened. Don't know why it happened. I feel like Darby could afford anybody to get to where we got to. So Darby Allen defeats Matt Hardy to open up the show and after the match is more so I feel like the reasoning of even having the match. And we would see uh, Brody King. He would come out and he would hold Matt Hardy in a chokehold. He called out Sting and Darby Allen and said, look, we want a rematch. The House of Black wants a rematch at AEW Grand Slam and you better give it to me only problem is that Darby is accepting before Matt Hardy's feet is even dangling. So he puts him in a choker anyway. He drops him. Lights go back out. Um, so we're going to get a tag team matchup between the House of Black and Darby Allen and Sting. I don't know where this is going. I feel like it should be over unless they had a certain path they wanted to go down uh, before uh, Alistair Black or Malachi Black decided to take a break or leave the company. So maybe we're going to get to where they was trying to get to in the first place. I don't know if there's going to be like a four-man faction type of situation or what. Um, but I feel like that feud ended, you know, the last time they fought. So I don't understand why they're going at it again. But we're going to get the matchup, tag team matchup at AEW Grand Slam. We also seen Penelope Ford defeat Willow Nightingale. I like Willow Nightingale a lot. Hopefully she starts to gain some momentum at some point. But Penelope Ford, I like what they're doing with her. They're reintroducing her as a legit contender, in my eyes, to the AEW's women roster. Either championship she wants to go for. Uh, she came up a little bit short against Tony Storm, so I doubt that she'll be fighting Tony Storm anytime soon. Her and Jada both heels. I doubt she'll be fighting Jada at any point anytime soon. So, um, yeah, we'll have to kind of see. But I do like the fact that they're building some momentum behind Penelope Ford. We also seen Ethan Page destroy Dan Housing. None of these matches was really that entertaining on AEW uh, Rampage this week. Um, outside of Samoa Joe and Joss Woods. That was the main event. We did see Samoa Joe go over. God dang it, because I thought that was the chance that Josh Woods would finally capture some gold in this new era of AEW combined with ROH. I think Josh Woods is a really great talent, but he came up a little bit short. Um against Samoa Joe, man. But what happened after the matchup may possibly lead to something. I doubt it. Uh, Warlord would come down after these two would try to start uh, an attack on Samoa Joe and pretty much to make the save. So maybe we're going to get a... Well, Tony Lee's already got destroyed by Warlow. So we're probably going to get Josh Woods. I feel like that's a good step up in competition for Warlow. I feel like it'll be a longer match. I feel like it won't be a match where he'll just go off in just destroy somebody in about three or four minutes. So... Maybe we'll get a Warlow on Josh Woods. Maybe we'll get a Warlow on Samoa Joe. You know how Joe is the type to say, you know, I do things by myself. I didn't need your help. Maybe we'll get that type of situation going on. But either way, we see some advancement for Warlow. Now let's go ahead and jump to the new fun side of wrestling. That being WWE. Wow. 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 Friday Night Smackdown. We did see the return of Paul Heyman. I like that. I like the fact that Paul Heyman is now back with the bloodline. We got Paul Heyman, very entertaining on the microphone. Sami Zayn reminds me of, I would guess would have to say younger, Chris Jericho. Not in the fact of, you know, the accolades or anything like that. But I feel like Sami Zayn, since he's been in the W, well, Sami Zayn anywhere, honestly. Uh, you put him anywhere and he finds a way to get over. He finds a way to remain relevant. And he does it, whether it's the microphone, whether it's inside the ring. He just always finds a spot to fit in. Sami Zayn is someone that you cannot keep off of TV. Too entertaining, whether that's wrestling or talking on the microphone. So the uh, SmackDown will kick off actually with Logan Paul inside the ring. Uh, him and Paul Heyman, well, the bloodline. Paul Heyman speaking for the bloodline. Him and Logan's in the ring one-on-one. Thought it was a pretty good back and forth. Uh, so Sammy jumps in there and says, you know what, I can pretty much handle this, Paul, I got it. You're clearly not the man for the job. And he catches a stiff right from Logan Paul. 
setting up the matchup for Roman Reigns and Logan Paul, Logan Paul, WWE Undisputed Championship on the line at Crown Jewel. They were going to have a press conference in Vegas on Saturday. Um, a little chippy, pushing back and forth with Roman Reigns and Paul. Triple H kind of had to step in and you know calm Roman down for a little bit. I like that. I like how they try to bring some realism to the fact that this YouTuber is trying to step in my arena. Now, why I think this matchup is happening? One, Logan Paul has a huge following, right? Uh, number two. Logan, Logan Paul might have an even bigger following of people who want to see Logan Paul get his head bashed in. And that's what we're going to see at Crown Jewel. There's no way he's going to hang with Roman Reigns. Of course, I think he'll put on a good performance. But at the end of the day, I think Roman Reigns has to dominate Logan Paul. Sorry, Logan, this is not the match where you're going to get some mids and we make you look good. This is the match where you get dominated and we write you off until maybe Royal Rumble sometime. You go do whatever you're doing in your YouTube shop and your boxing thing. Cool. And we're going to go back and finish doing what we're doing at the WWE. But that's the only reason I think this is taking place. Crown Jewel is kind of one of those um, events where they want to get a bit draw, right? So I think Logan Paul is actually not a bad choice for what they want to do. In the sense that, uh, you know, you want to find get as many eyes on the product as possible. So, I understand why. At the end of the day, if I'm someone who's been busting my ass for about a year, two years, three years, haven't received the title shot at all, or haven't received the title shot in a long time, I'm kind of pissed that someone like Logan Paul can just jump in and then take my shot at that main event against Roman Reigns, win or lose. So, we're going to have to kind of see who's next. How's that situation remedied? Because, you know, you got guys like Kevin Owens who's on fire. You got guys like Steph Owens, I mean, Steph Rollins, who put his name back into the hat. Uh, Drew McIntyre, Kerry and Cross, they're kind of Xing each other out right now. So, I feel like these two guys are the ones that's kind of taking the back seat to someone like Logan Paul. Luckily, Kevin Owens is on fire right now with what he's going with Austin Theory. So, he doesn't have to worry about that too much. And Steph Rollins kind of have his hands full a little bit with Matt Riddle. So maybe this is a way, like, look, we're going to keep you occupied and keep you hot. But we're going to go ahead and make this move over here, get more eyes on the product, and then we'll build towards Roman Reigns and the next competitor. So um, we'll have to see and keep our eyes on what actually happened in that situation. But no doubt in my mind, Roman Reigns steamrolls Logan Paul, um, <clears throat> possibly injuring him. Doing something to the point that Logan Paul is now going to have to be off WWE programming for some time. And I think a lot of people will be happy with that situation. We also will see Solo defend his North American Championship against Mad Cat Moss. I'm a little upset because I like to binge watch NXT. So I like to, you know, wait about three to four weeks and then take a Saturday or a Sunday and just run through NXT back to back to back. Um, now football is on, so I normally do it on like a uh, Friday night, and I'll watch SmackDown in the morning, then fo college football will come on, like my day's perfect. So with me seeing Solo with the North American Championship, I'm like, God dang it, I ruined it for myself, because now I know he wins that matchup against Carmelo Hayes, who's a great talent, but nonetheless, the bloodline all has gold. A uh, really good matchup between Mad Cat Moss and Solo. They actually gave these guys a lot of time, which I like. And for some big guys, they were moving. It wasn't like there was a lot of um, spots where they would be taking their time or taking some breaks or holes where they would kind of just be relaxing and catching their breath. These guys were actually moving. So I like this matchup a lot. I like Solo using the rock bottom or his version of the rock bottom to win this matchup. I like the fact that uh, he told Jay, yo, he was slipping early in the night when Sammy had his one-on-one -on -one matchup. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So I don't want the Uso brothers to come out here. I need the honorary Usamo, uh, Sam, uh, damn, Sammy by my side, right? So I need the honorary Uso to come down to the ring. And Sammy Zayn actually played a, played a big part in Solo getting his win over Mad Cat Moss. I do like the fact that Mad Cat Moss has finally moved on from Happy Corbin. He's starting to see different and more opportunities. So, so far, I'm really happy about the way SmackDown is moving. I'm happy about the way the talent is moving. I'm happy about the feuds that they're building up, the characters that they have on SmackDown right now. So, let's go ahead and dive into that. 
We've seen uh, Ricochet. He defeated Sami Zayn early in the night. And honestly, it was more so Jey Uso getting in the way. Sami Zayn actually had Ricochet. It looked like he had Ricochet beat for like a five or a six count if Jay wasn't so busy trying to jump back in the ring and to get revenge on Ricochet. We also seen Cherry and Cross and Drew McIntyre build towards their feud. I like that. I like the fact that um Drew McIntyre and Cherry and Cross are two guys, like two alpha males that's gonna actually go at it. So I feel like no matter who comes out on top of this, you gotta think they're gonna be lined it for Roman Reigns. Which leads me to believe Karrion Cross is probably going to be the one to come out on top. Since Roman Reigns just had that matchup with uh, Drew McIntyre at Clash at the Castle. So we're going to get a matchup between Karrion Cross and Roman Reigns at some point. Or Karrion Cross and Walter at some point. Man, I'm here for that. We also got to see the maximum male models get destroyed in Brock Braun Strowman. Um, who was then attacked by the Alpha Academy. Look like we're going to set up a matchup between Otis and Braun Strowman next week on SmackDown. That's going to be pretty good. I think Braun's going to run through Otis. Sorry, bud. You're going to be used as a stepping stone. Um, we also seen Bailey defeat Raquel Rodriguez with the help of Damage Control. And I'm still not really sold on Damage Control, man. I thought them winning the championships would kind of do it for me. But every time I hear these these guys speak or barely speak about damage control. It's talking about how we got so much control and so much power power over the roster. Barely, you have to capture the gold before you get all the power. And before you guys even had the tag team championships, you were saying the same things. You were saying how you had so much control and influence when you didn't even have any gold. I need the message week after week to be a little bit different. I feel like Bailey is good enough to deliver um, these promos and deliver different matches every message every time she comes out there. Um, I feel like I need Bailey to kind of just put this all together about why this group is really here and what our true direction is, what we really plan to do in the WWE and the women roster. Do you want to take over everything? Like, why did you pick these two women? What did you see in them? You know, what did you guys see in each other to even join up and form a group? I really want to see that point um, drawn home, brunk home. One thing WWE has done a really great job on lately is these video packages making you care, making you um, feel like you're a part of whatever character they're developing, like the package they did for Drew McIntyre leading up to Clash of the Castle. That was amazing. I feel like they could do the same thing with Bailey and Damage Control to kind of show and point why and how these women kind of came together. I feel like that would really bring it home. Now, speaking of bringing it home, Liv Morgan, finally, I got to see that confident uh, Liv Morgan that I wanted to see, that Liv Morgan that feel like I can go out and actually beat you, that I'm better than you. So she sits down face-to-face -face with Ronda Rouse, and she cuts off Kayla Braston, tell her, look, you can go ahead and go. I need to have a conversation with Ronda, talk about how Ronda needs to respect her because I'm the only one that pinned you not once but twice, and I'm going to do it again. I love that confidence. I love the fact that she went out there and challenged her to end uh, a stream rules match at the pay-per-view. That's pretty dope. I love this confidence on Liv Morgan. I hate seeing that. I'm just going to crawl and, and, and scratch my way through. Man, leave all that behind. You're the champ now. I need you to act like the champion. I need you to be that confident Liv Morgan. I seen you sit down in front of Ronda Rousey with. And if I get that Liv Morgan week in and week out, she feels like the champion. It feels like I'm number one and I feel confident that I can go out and beat anybody. So I love to see that Liv Morgan. But I do not think you're going to beat Ronda Rousey at the stream rules. I think we're going to finally see Ronda and Shayna Baszler actually form some type of a group or a team or whatever and there and them two together is going to put out Liv Morgan. That's what I think is going to happen, but I do love this new side of Liv Morgan. This is exactly what I want to see from her and I just want to see more of it. I feel like these two in this interview actually kind of brought out the best in each other as far as promos. Ronda doesn't really put on a good promo herself, you know, one when she's by herself with the microphone. So I feel like these two did a good job of playing off each other. And not only did it uh, lead to a good segment, but I feel like it built up the Liv Morgan character. I feel like it played right into the Ronda Rousey bad girl image that she want to have. Perfect between these two this week. Now, in the main event, we will see a fatal four-way match 
between four tag teams, the New Day, Hit Bro, Imperium, and the Brawling Brutes. Um, this matchup was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Going into the match, of course, I wanted to see Hit Bro win. I came in here a couple of weeks ago and said, I think Hit Row will be the ones to take the title off the Usos somehow, some way. But they came up a little bit short. And inside this matchup, it was a great job of storytelling. It was a great job of highs and lows. It was a great job of falsy finishes where you think, oh, they're going to win. At one point, I said, oh, man, New Day and Usos again. Here we go. That's old oh, snap. Okay, Imperium's going to get their shot. And then out of nowhere, you get the Brawling Brutes. I said, cool. I'm cool with it. It's a new tag team, new challengers. I would have preferred to see Sheamus and Rich Holland be the team of the Brawling Brutes to actually go out there and get the tag team shots. But it looked like, you know, this unfinished business between Sheamus and Walter, which I don't mind watching again. And honestly, Rich Holland and Butch or Pete Dunne, whatever you want to call them, look kind of sharp as a tag team. So it's not too bad. So these guys are going to get their shot against the Usos for the tag team championships. I don't know if they're going to win, but for the fact that Solo kind of came at Jay and said, you know, you've been off your game, you're too worried about Sammy versus, you know, the whole goal. The whole goal is for everyone to win, for everyone to hold gold, you know what I'm saying? So could that be a possible um, distinction inside of the bloodline? Will Sammy accidentally cost the Usos their tag team championship? Would that be the start of the downfall of the bloodline leading into that WrestleMania match with Roman Reigns in uh, The Rock or Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes, whoever we may get Roman Reigns facing at WrestleMania or possibly before WrestleMania? Because The Rock and Roman Reigns is big enough where you don't need a title, but the title does add something to that matchup. Understand that, of course. But that was everything, everything that we got to see on SmackDown. We're building towards uh, the Crown Jewel pay-per-view. I think in about three weeks, that's shaping up to be a good pay-per-view. The main event so far, Roman Reigns, Logan Paul, I think uh, just so that Roman Reigns can punish him and the fans finally get to see what they want to see. They want to see a Paul, a Paul brother get destroyed. So that's what you're going to finally get to see at Crown Jewel. So now pay us that little bit of money. You can watch it happen for yourself. You can watch it over and over again if you record DVR or whatever you want to do. Um, SmackDown, really good episode of SmackDown this week. Really good advancement. I like what's going on on um, SmackDown right now. And we're slowly starting to see Triple H and everything that he wants to do slowly start to change. We're starting to see these brands switch up a little bit. We're starting to see more of the Triple H in each of these shows each week that it goes on. So I can't wait until we get into like uh, February. Or I can't wait till we get after WrestleMania. When we now will finally get fresh storylines from the brain of Triple H. No more of the leftover Vince McMahon straggles that we may have had where you know this storyline wasn't tied up or this person is in a role that he didn't really want to be in or not comfortable in. And now we're going to see him in a different light. I think that's when we're truly going to see um, going forward what the WWE is going to look like under Triple H, Stephanie McMahon. So if you haven't already, please go ahead, hit that like, subscribe, turn your notifications so that anytime we drop a video, you'll be the first ones to get noticed. So definitely meet me back here. All right. I'm Kato. I'm signing out. Peace.